Good morning, guys. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I'm headed to downtown LA right now for a meeting, and then we are headed to the Tesla Service Center to finally fix all of those issues that were wrong at delivery, as well as that scratch. And as usual, the traffic is horrible. Self-driving helps a lot, though. How annoying is this? My safety score is now 97. I was attempting to do donuts last night in the Model S Plaid, and then, oh my god, what is that in the road? There's a tree in the road. As I was saying before that tree rudely interrupted me, I was doing donuts and then I forgot to reset my safety score before putting it in park, so it included it and now I have below a 98, which means I think I have to wait another week or two before I can get full self-driving. This is really starting to bum me out. The good news is my friend Zach has a car with full self-driving already fully enabled, so we're gonna check that out. That building looks so crazy on the left. There are some pretty cool buildings downtown. The homeless problem is brutal out here though. My gosh, it's tense for miles. So before we make it to the Tesla Service Center, I wanna point out the few issues with the car that happened at delivery for those of you who haven't seen it. So unfortunately, when I got it delivered, we had these two little scratches here, which is kind of a bummer. And then inside of the trunk, there's actually supposed to be an Alcantara cover to cover the luggage as well as a cover right here. The one thing that happened after delivery was this scratch here. And another thing I noticed later on that definitely happened before I took delivery is this weird scratch on the roof here. And lastly, now this might just be a Tesla thing, but there's some slight rattles that feel like they're coming from the front left side of the car. It almost sounds like a control arm bushing is going bad. I'm not sure if the car just makes some rattles, but I definitely wanna bring that to their attention to see if there's any issues with the car. They do make getting a service appointment really easy. So you go to your Tesla app, click on service, and then from there you can set up an appointment and even show pictures of the damage or the problem. Nothing like a good old Tesla tunnel run. <laughs> oh, listen to that exhaust. Woo! Beautiful chalk 992 Porsche. Damn, clean RS6. This is a weird spot for a service. Here we are. Things are about to get really exciting because my friend Zach loaned me his Tesla Model 3, which has the full self-driving beta on it. So I'm gonna test this out for the first time and figure out, can this car truly navigate you from point A to point B without any involvement of the driver and get you there safely? Let's find out. All right, guys, we are in a Tesla Model 3 with full self-driving. I am incredibly excited to try this out. If you go to Autopilot, you can see there are a list of new options available because it's got full self-driving beta. If we go to software, you can see that it's actually beta version 10.4. There's a new update, 10.4, which has some improvements over beta 10.3. It actually lists them out. That'll load in a second, show you Improved handling when driving off navigation route. Improved handling and detection of high speed objects. A series of improvements, but really, let's see what this is actually like out on the road. I am very excited. So uh, we've got a destination in that's close by, but it should take us through some cool and difficult routes. Gonna go ahead and pull out from the spot here. Now to activate the full self-driving beta, double click down on the steering wheel and check it out, we've got this full display up on the screen that shows you a plethora of driving information. It's got the signal on, it stopped at the four-way stop sign, and we are going through the intersection right now. This is wild to experience. Now, it does tell you that you have to keep your eyes on the road, the camera's actually monitoring you. If it suspects you're not paying any attention, it will cancel the system. And every once in a while, you do have to give a slight, uh, force to the steering wheel so that it lets the car know that you are still in the driver's seat and you haven't gone into the back seat to watch a movie or fall asleep. We're approaching a red light here and then we're gonna go on to Rodeo Drive, which is super tight, tons of traffic, cars coming from every angle. Very curious to see how the Tesla performs in that scenario. Right here, we can see all these cars driving across the intersection. It's detected the light is red. And then once it goes green, we'll be on our way down Rodeo Drive. This certainly is a unique experience. I've never been in a almost fully autonomous vehicle before. My Tesla Model S Plaid has the full self-driving, but it hasn't unlocked Beta yet. So I'm used to it, uh, auto steer on the highway, but I am certainly not used to the experience of basically typing in a destination and your Tesla being able to drive itself from point A to point B. It's really exciting that we're finally getting to that level of autonomy. So it's green now. 
It's detecting these cars in the middle of the intersection, so it hasn't gone yet. Apply a slight turning force. Okay. And by the way, I'm not using the brake or the gas whatsoever. I love how it detects all the vehicles on the road. It's even detecting these pedestrians over there, that woman on the corner. But let's see, because a lot of people do some weird stuff on like stopping in the middle of Rodeo Drive. That person has parked. That is not a parking spot. All right. So far, so good. Once we test this out in a city street environment with a lot of traffic, then I wanna test it out on the highway as well as canyon roads to kind of give it the full gamut of what you might experience uh, while using full self-driving. This is creepy, that guy's getting pretty close, but as you can see, the Tesla detects that. Oh man. So far, it's working absolutely flawlessly. I've had to do zero intervention and it feels pretty confident. I'm, I'm very impressed. I will say the intersection that's coming up ahead is really challenging, even for <laughs> the average driver. So I'm excited to see how the Tesla does in that scenario. I will say one thing I'm a big fan of is it seems on the Model 3, you get the full self-driving screen almost two thirds of the way across the actual main screen. On the Model S Plaid, it looks like all the full self-driving information is actually just on the dashboard here. Now, it's not a big deal because the car is driving itself, so you don't really need to see any of this, but it looks so cool. Uh, it's fun to play with and, and actually get to view it in real time. This intersection is extremely complex, so I'm excited to see how the Tesla deals with it. We've got somebody at the crosswalk here. It's detected that. We've got turn signals absolutely everywhere and traffic from every angle. So in terms of a complex situation, it doesn't get much crazier than this for the Tesla to figure it out. But I have faith this is gonna work. And I'm not gonna press the gas at all. It's green. All right, it's creeping forward and it's stopping. And it's just stopped for the pedestrians in the crosswalk, even though it was a green light. So that's super awesome. Uh, I was contemplating pressing the brake there, but I didn't. Now let's see, once the people clear out of the way, got my foot hovering over the brake, does it go forward? Yep. Okay. And then we've got a left turn coming up. Is it gonna make it? Come on, you gotta go all the way. All right, so this one didn't work. It's in the non-turning lane, trying to take a left. So I'm gonna cancel that. Well, so far, so good, but it did not like that turning lane. Clearly, full self-driving is not perfect, and Tesla doesn't claim it to be, hence why it's in beta, hence why you have to get a good safety score beforehand. But it does seem like for more normal, not ultra complex scenarios like this. This is a four way stop. It's gonna work flawlessly. It stops. It knows we are supposed to go first because we arrived at the stop sign before that Porsche and off we go. It's avoiding the car on the side of the road. Look how much the steering wheel is moving. This is a hectic intersection. Let's see what happens here. Okay, everyone's confused. All right, excellent job, Tesla. Wow, <laughs> that is awesome. Okay, how is this for complicated? There are cones everywhere, construction going on, and cars parked on the side, and the Tesla's absolutely killing it. That was impressive, actually, wow. So we've entered a much farther destination now that's gonna take us onto the freeway for the boring parts, I'm probably gonna fast forward and cut them out, but anytime the system either fails or does something exceptional, uh, obviously I'm going to show that. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with this system. Unprotected left near U-turn. It doesn't get crazier than this. Sees a gap, unbelievable. That is impressive, wow. <laughs> the detection of cars is pretty impressive. It knows that's a truck, knows that's a bus. It actually can detect, oh, 
Okay, that guy kind of pulled out in front of me and the Tesla knew what to do. It can also detect emergency vehicles as well, like ambulance and uh, police cars. We are on the freeway now to get a little taste of what autopilot is like in this environment. And I've actually routed it to Mulholland Drive so we can get some canyon action as well. Now on the freeway, it does require user input. It basically reverts it back to standard autopilot, confirm lane change. So I'm gonna go ahead, use my signal, and it's gonna make that lane change. It's no different than uh, the autopilot that I have in my Model S, even without the beta. On the freeway, autopilot works extremely well. I've driven probably a thousand plus miles using autopilot and it really never has any issues whatsoever. It's so convenient for long distance commuting. And eventually once full self-driving beta improves a little bit, it's going to be the future. Once cars are fully autonomous, there isn't gonna be crazy bumper to bumper traffic on the 405 anymore. All the cars are gonna be communicating with each other and flowing perfectly at the speed limit, really close to each other because there's no user error. The vast majority of traffic going on on these freeways is somebody slamming the brakes, not paying attention, and then causing a chain reaction. It's also gonna be amazing for limiting people drunk driving, going home from bars or restaurants, as well as just commuting to and from work in an environment where driving really isn't uh, something that's all that exciting. Obviously for car enthusiasts, we're gonna be wanting to drive our car ourselves, but even as an enthusiast, there are scenarios like bumper to bumper traffic or coming home from a bar where having full autonomous driving would be amazing. So it's gonna take the exit here, it's signaled, and now I believe once we're off the freeway, it's gonna revert to, yep, that full self-driving beta it's brought back up this awesome display. All right, which lane does it choose? I guess it doesn't matter in this case as they're both turn lanes. Apply slight turning force. All right, it thought about going there and then corrected itself and it's made it to the correct part of the intersection. All righty, wow, phenomenal job there. Changed lanes. This is working really, really well. Now it's got a really sharp turn up ahead where there's a Model 3 performance. Let's see how it takes that. Got the signal on. It would be kind of cool if it actually recognized that this was a Tesla. I imagine in future updates, they'll eventually do that and we could have some sort of form of communication between the two vehicles, especially if that one also had full self-driving beta. I believe it would provide additional useful information for both cars, having them uh, communicate with each other. Another Tesla right there. I'm literally in the land of Teslas right now. All right, lights green, didn't click the gas. It's going by itself. Sharp turn right now, apply turning force. Okay. I only touched the wheel because it said to, otherwise it was gonna kill the autopilot. All right. It's a little bit confused with this super wide lane, but all right, it's centered itself. All right, and now we are on Mulholland Drive. So let's see how this thing handles once it gets a little twistier up ahead. So far, I'm very impressed. Obviously, it's not perfect uh, in dense city environments, but it's getting there, it really is. This part's the only annoying thing is that when it asks you to apply a turning force, you have to apply enough of a force for it to recognize it. But if you apply too much of a turning force, then it deactivates autopilot. And sometimes just going like this for some reason isn't enough. See, it didn't, it didn't recognize it. Okay, there we go. But if I had ripped it a little bit too hard, uh, it would have deactivated self-driving. Now we're fully on a canyon road. Wow. Doing well. I've applied the force. All right, there we go. Now, does it slow down for the school zone? No, it did not slow down for a school zone even though it is currently uh, school time. So it should have slowed down to go 25 miles an hour there, but it didn't. It's continuing on that 35 zone speed limit. Thankfully there was no children around. Well, I'm very impressed with full self-driving beta version 10.4. To answer everyone's question, can a Tesla actually drive you from point A to point B? Nice Maybach with that license plate. 
without any driver intervention, just typing in your destination in the navigation? The answer is yes, unless it's a really advanced situation like a couple of those in Beverly Hills, the car will fully drive itself without any driver intervention other than touching the wheel a little bit to let the system know that you're here. Now that's only laws and regulations. This car could, of course, continue driving without you having to jerk the steering wheel back and forth. Eventually, hopefully, uh, as regulations become more and more lenient and people realize that computers can drive better than humans, uh, at least we're approaching that level uh, of sophistication with autonomous driving, eventually a computer is gonna be significantly better than your average human who is pretty much texting and driving the entire time. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Like always, please browse the channel and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you next video.